Hello everyone. Before I show you the footage from today's collaboration, I just wanted to put a disclaimer on this video. Sex magic is a more controversial topic and sex and sexuality in general is not something that people openly speak about. So Luna and I have both decided to be completely unfiltered in this video and really give you the real answers for what we think about sex magic. So I do not recommend watching this video in the presence of children. You will notice that we are very, very unfiltered throughout the video. We talk about so many different things as far as the shame and guilt that surrounds glamour magic and sex magic. We talk about so many things, but I wanted to put this disclaimer here that if you are in a more sensitive environment to maybe wait and watch this video when you don't have to worry about someone else hearing it that you don't necessarily want to hear a conversation like this. So if I had to give this video a rating, I would say it's maybe PG-13. Just giving you all a heads up, you have been forewarned. everyone, I am Ivy the Occultist if you're brand new to my channel and today we're going to be talking about glamour magic and sex magic. Oh my god, I've been dying to talk about these topics forever. So today I'm joined by Luna Saranova and Luna, would you like to just kind of introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, hi everybody. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I love watching Ivy's videos and like seeing all the cool people you have on. So I feel really honored to be considered cool enough to be here. Um, but You're so yeah, cool, by the way, <laughs> You're like the epitome you. of cool girl. Okay. Anyway, sorry. That is so funny. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I'm a content creator. Uh, I live out here in Los Angeles and I do some modeling, some acting and um, but my heart's with like my YouTube and sharing all my witchy uh, experiences. I I just love to share. I think community is so important. And um, yeah, I'm here as a work in progress and I'm just here to share what I've learned. And um, I think in terms of like sex magic and glamour magic, it should be good to note that I used to be a stripper. We love to see it. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think like that informed so much of my practice and really gave me it, it's so crazy and we can talk about it but it's like crazy like how much you learn about psychology and it's almost like an anthropological experiment to to be in the sex work industry and um and so and so yeah I'm just sharing the crazy shit that happens in my life <laughs> I love it you I mean yeah. you also mentioned okay so this is me being totally ignorant right now so please forgive me but you also mentioned at one point that you do playboy or you used to do playboy mm -hmm. so what does that mean like what yeah do that still I'm sorry if I'm ignorant and asking no this. you're fine you're fine so yes yeah, so uh it was literally on Beltane I became a playboy bunny and this is their new like centerfold thing so it's not as cool as it sounds. <laughs> it's it's still cool. It is basically um, this year Playboy came out with what is essentially like an OnlyFans, um, but through their platform, and it's called Centerfold, um, which is not the Centerfold that you may know of if you think of like Playboy Centerfolds. Um, and so it was like essentially like an OnlyFans thing. So I did that for a while, but as you know, and as people might know, um, my Instagram got taken down, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure that it was. Um, because I hadn't, I hadn't like done anything. I'm pretty good about being aware of like the terms and not violating anything. And of course, like my Instagram audience is not at all my Playboy audience. Um, and so I know I wasn't doing anything wrong. I know that I was super careful. So I think it was either literally just Instagram cracking down on anyone who talks about sex work in the slightest, even if they're not saying like, Hey, go check out my Playboy. Um, or another good guess is like a cranky person who was trying to get me shut down. So I ended up having to have kind of uh, a little bit of a moment and and really see like, is this something I want to, um, you know, maybe risk my YouTube for because Instagram that was like losing 5,000 followers. YouTube's like my heart. That is like, we're almost like 30,000 people here. And I would really hate to lose all that hard work and and all those vlogs and everything I've put out and my creativity. And so I think losing my Instagram was a bit of a heartbreak and it kind of was a, like a really tough decision of like, do I want to make this sacrifice? Because I'm at the point where I don't need to be doing sex work anymore. Like when I was dancing, like I was going to like food banks before I was dancing. I couldn't afford food. I could barely afford rent and I was paying my way through college. And so I needed it then. And now it's like, I don't need it. Like, it's really fun. It feels like an amazing outlet for my sexuality and my expression. And it feels um, really like an ode to the goddess and like an offering even to the goddess. And 
And I just had to decide that it just wasn't the best choice, if that makes sense. Yeah. Not from like me not liking it, but just like fuck Instagram and like fuck the patriarchy and this puritanical culture we live in where we have to make these decisions. And honestly, I'm very lucky that I didn't need that money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah. totally agree. And I really want to get more when we talking about when we're talking about sex magic later, I really want to get more into your role being somewhat of a sex worker and in that industry mm-hmm. and kind of your perspective, because it can be very empowering and it's so taboo. So we're definitely mm-hmm. going to talk about that. Um, can you talk a little bit more about just how you kind of got into glamour magic and sex magic and what kind of yeah. allured you to that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think my beginnings in glamour magic were not witchy at all, but (laughs) it was the same thing. Basically, um, when I was a kid, I had really severe eczema and I still had it up till about a couple of years ago. Um, And the only reason I don't have it anymore is because I'm on like a really life-saving medicine that I do need to like just function. And so I, you know, was this teenage girl I was like 12 years old and I had like a face full of eczema and my arms were covered and it was horrifying and I was I was bullied really bad growing up and it really was makeup that ended up bringing me into the glamour magic sphere of things because when I put on makeup I was essentially you know hiding my eczema and it's makeup and it's you know it's it's that and and everything like that but it's it really was that transformation of like I'm confident like I'm going to go talk to that cute boy. Like, I don't want to hide inside all day. Like my depression got better. Like I was less afraid of being seen. Like I knew I wouldn't have to answer the questions of like, oh my God, what's wrong with, what's wrong with your cheek? Like, what's that? Like what happened? Because those were so invasive and made me feel so self-conscious. And so it really did start with makeup. And I think that's why I've continued. I became a makeup artist, um, like at age 16. And I really fell in love with makeup because of that inner transformation that was able to happen for me and the freedom that came with it. It wasn't a superficial thing. And I know it really comes off that way sometimes, especially for people who maybe aren't into makeup. Maybe it just seems like I'm feeling girly girl today, you know, and it's really so much deeper than that. So yeah, my first experiences with glamour magic were just realizing that I could change how people perceived me and that could make me just a little bit happier like it could make life a little easier and then you know those years of of realizing like I can have these personal interactions and then when I take my makeup off these people still like me and it's like no one's gonna hate me because of my eczema and like it sounds so silly but like I remember having my husband first see me without makeup on when I was still having these really bad eczema flares and I was just mortified and I was like he's gonna not like me and and he just like doesn't care doesn't notice and even now when I do have these flares I feel so comfortable around my friends and my loved ones of like I don't need to show up in this I don't need to be pretty I don't need to be pretty to be accepted or loved and like I think that's something that a lot of people uh you know have to go through you have to realize that you're so much more worthy of of love, you know, and you don't need to be any specific way to get it. Anyway, that's like a long ramble. <laughs> no, I love it. Okay. We're we already know. A long ramble. It's like, I love a yeah. good long ramble and I love okay, good story. And it's so true that yeah. like, I, I think that people look at gra- glamour magic. We're going to talk about when we get to glamour magic, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about maybe potentially some misconceptions. Cause you're right. I think people immediately think of makeup and they think that it's a little bit superficial and mm-hmm. um, it can, it can lead to a deeper transformation than that. So I'm excited to talk about that. Let's start with glamour magic then. And then we'll maybe move into sex magic I have so many questions so there are some some stuff that I wanted to ask you and then also I had um, put up a post for my channel members to ask their questions as well so it's kind of like a collection of their questions and my questions and some of it I kind of want to talk about too because I love glamour magic and I love sex magic so I have shit that I want to share too it's gonna be great so um, my first question for you as far as glamour magic goes is are you wearing a glamour today and if so what is it Okay, you know I put the mercury glyph on my forehead so that I wouldn't, <laughs> so that mercury retrograde would not fuck me up today. I was like, okay, mercury, please like take kindly to me, be nice to me, let me express myself, let let the technology work today, like please, because as we know, today mercury goes retrograde and it's mercury day and and it, we just entered Virgo season, so I'm like, come on, mercury, I feel like it could go good. It could go good. So I, yeah, I brought in Mercury. hope that he's chilling on my side today. And I have my um daily glamours, which I just, this is my Freya necklace. It's just amber. 
And so I keep this to bring in her energy and hopefully I can exude some of some of her sensuality and her creativity. And then of course I have my um, Hades ring that I wear in devotion to him as well to protect me and to give me Love some it. fucking stability because <laughs> I'm just all air and fire as you can probably tell. And so I'm like, bring me back down to earth, please. I yeah. resonate with that so much. People always <laughs> think that I'm an earth sign and I have like zero earth mm. in my chart. And it's so funny. Everybody's like, oh, you have, you must have so much earth. I have zero earth. Um, But yeah, for anybody wondering, so today is the day where Mercury goes retrograde. We are literally filming this at the point where Mercury has went into retrograde. So as tr true Mercury retrograde fashion, I thought we were starting at 10. We were supposed to actually start at 11. <laughs> like we're starting, it's just, it is what it is today. Really funny. Communication's weird. You know, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, I am, so my glamour today is a little bit, it's like a combination of the sun and Venus. Cause I kind of wanted both energies for this conversation. I wanted, um, that sun energy. So I have a lot of gold and yellow on, as you can see, I've got like the celestial stars on my face, but it's, um, even though I look very sun it, I feel like the style of it is Venusian. Mm -hmm. It feels very Venusian to me. So got my little, um, feminine snake earrings for transformation I just to I totally feel like these are Venus so oh, yeah um, yeah so just bringing in some of those energies today and I usually do like a little bit of glamour magic before all my videos and that was actually mm -hmm. my next question for you is do you do glamour magic for all of your videos or are there some videos where you're just like I'm too tired I don't have the energy for this or like where where are you at with the glamour magic situation and content creation oh, oh absolutely so I'm like so big about being honest about like I am so tired <laughs> like I also have like chronic illness and I you know I have depression and like some days really you just have to get by and maybe you just say like hey Freya please home girl like help me out today you know <laughs> give a little quick prayer or something you know we don't have to be always elaborate and um, I do try <clears throat> I do try to like bring in a little bit of glamour I think it's so easy I've just gotten into the routine of like I'm always doing my makeup for my videos and so like literally putting a sigil in your foundation and blending that in and bringing in that energy it's so simple I love simple magic I love I don't need to be doing elaborate things for it to work and I think that is a lot of like my Aries energy I think that I'm just kind of like coded to be able to be like I'm like really good at just like really quick things like I'm gonna get it you know um rather than being really pulled to that like super hyper ritualistic though I do love that um but but yeah I think there's always a sigil in my makeup there is always something going on in my makeup and I have some like earrings that are charmed I love working with charm jewelry me too and um yeah it's like so simple and so I think having things like pre-charmed um and things that are just like so worked into your routine, that's my favorite because like, yeah, it is hard. It's hard to do. And I do love working. I try to work with like all the senses. And so I have some perfumes, some roll-ons that are like dedicated to Gemini that I use when I'm like feeling like having a hard time expressing myself or I, I just like I'm feeling a little bit reclusive. I'm like bringing that Gemini energy. I'll roll it on doing the glyph of Gemini and I'm like, let's exude what we're trying to like say. Let's bring in that Gemini energy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and And so, yeah. I guess that's what I'd say. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I definitely don't do glamour magic for like every single one of my videos. Actually, you mm -hmm. know what? I should have started with what is glamour magic. Okay, we're going to get to that. <laughs> I'm doing things yeah. all out of order right now. But <laughs> anyway, I think I don't do it for every single video, but I definitely use it, especially when I'm talking about more controversial or more sensitive mm. topics. I do glamours to, this sounds so strange, but I do glamours to make me seem less threatening. I want to seem mm. more like cozy, comfy. Because when you're talking about controversial issues or sensitive topics, you don't want to be like jarring and scary and, and you really want to have like a wonderful open dialogue about it. So I try to make people feel cozy and comfy when we're talking about more sensitive mm -hmm. things. Um, or sometimes, you know, if I'm if I'm having a fiery moment, I'm just going to wear some bad bitch energy and just say, <laughs> get it. I'm going to be controversial today. It is what mm -hmm. it is. I don't care how I'm coming off. <laughs> so, so I agree. It's kind of like um, I'm very much a lazy witch sometimes where I use like mm -hmm. pre-charm jewelry and things like that. So I don't have to do it the day of. So I agree with you for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go all the way back. <laughs> what is glamour magic? What are we even talking about yes. for people that maybe have no idea what we're talking about? How would you define it? Yes. So I think glamour magic, um, 
we're going to talk about the preconceived notions that people have. I think it seems very like ooh, glamour, but it's like, it's, it's not, we have to look at like what that word means. And that word, it like essentially glamour is like changing this appearance of something. So it doesn't inherently have to be like beauty or making yourself look attractive or like you want to get a partner. So that's why you're doing glamour magic. I always tell people like one of the best things to learn with glamour magic, especially if you're doing a lot of like attraction work, uh, is learn how to make yourself invisible. Like get yourself a, I like to do like charming a little black jacket or something like that. If you're a woman, if you walk alone at night, if you, I mean, for any reason really, but I think being able to um, utilize glamour magic for covering yourself or hiding yourself or just sinking into the background. So not making yourself a target, if that makes sense. So glamour magic is just um, using magic to change how others are perceiving you or to change like how you're feeling about yourself. And then that also is making other people perceive you differently. So it is that just a changing of perception. Yeah. Hopefully that explained it. (laughs) No, you explained it perfectly. That's exactly how how I would explain it. And I think with the misconceptions, if we can just kind of go into that right now, I think when people think glamour magic, they immediately think of women using makeup Mm -hmm. to look beautiful. Like that Mm -hmm. is the stereotype for glamour Mm -hmm. magic. And it doesn't really, I think a lot of people have that misconception that it's not deeper than that. And also I want to say that it's, I mean, you can use glamours to make yourself look more beautiful or desirable Mm -hmm. or whatever, but you can also use glamours like you said for protection I Mm -hmm. use a glamour all the time for invisibility I have really like mastered the art of invisibility and going incognito in certain spaces where I don't want to be noticed you know you Mm -hmm. can glamour yourself to look a certain way to a potential employer to look more professional or courageous or whatever so there's so many different types of glamours and it's not just for feminine presenting individuals you know Mm -hmm. so is there anything as far as misconceptions go that you wanted to add to that because I feel like that's yeah <laughs> go for it if you have yeah to. no I think that you touched on that so well and I think what you said about how there is that stereotype that it's from women or femme presenting folks who are trying to become more attractive to get a partner and when we look at like the history glamour and witchcraft are so tied together right when you think of like the witch trials they were like these witches are putting on these glamours they're making us fall in love with them they're seducing us you know it's like all this crazy fucking talk and I think one of one of the best glamours that I like to do, if you're ever walking and you're feeling uncomfortable, or if you're feeling like, I don't know, bad vibes from um, a man, <laughs> or I mean, it doesn't have to be a man, but most often it's a man. Um, you can make yourself not attractive. You can make yourself feel repulsive to other people. Mm-hmm. And that might seem counterintuitive, but the fun thing about glamours is that they are very transient. They don't last forever. Like they're very quick. And so make yourself seem not attractive. Make yourself seem, you know, like, not a good target. Make yourself seem, I love making myself seem aggressive. Don't fuck with me. (laughs) I put on these (laughs) shields. I put on these glamour shields with like fucking spikes and I'm like, no one better fucking look at me today. Yes. (laughs) You know? And I think that's fine. You have to do what you got to do, you know, when you're a woman in the world and, and yeah, it's, it's not gendered. It has nothing to do uh, inherently with like beauty or sexuality, though it is inherently very tied to those things. Yeah. 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 You said everything so perfectly. I have literally nothing to add to that. So <laughs> that was so good. So what are some of your favorite glamours then? Like if you had a closet of glamours where you go in mm. and you look at the closet and you look at the five glamours that you have or whatever, what are the ones that you were putting on most often and how do you kind of do that? Yeah. So I think the one that I talk about most is, um, the use of of sigils or glyphs within my makeup, because like I said, I do that every day. It's something routine. It's something easy and it's something interchangeable. Um, I like to use like the Venus glyph. I like to use a solar glyph. If I'm trying to, if I'm like doing a video that day and I want it to get a lot of views, I want it to, you know, have that visibility of the sun. Um, I love my invisibility. I love my don't fucking talk to me. My sword shield, (laughs) like don't even think about it. Um, and uh working with colors is like a really easy thing to do too i think the glamour magic it's so interchangeable so um my yeah my go to is like using sigils using glyphs using my pre pre charm jewelry um working with color magic and how i'm presenting with my clothing um my sword shield to not fuck with me and i think those are probably the go to's i think when i was um dancing i had it's we can go into that it was like it's so it's so crazy. Let me find the words. 
because you are, it's so magical. Like you are putting on this persona, you're putting on this alter ego, you're putting on the outfit, you're changing your name. And that just immediate glamour when you put on that that costume, literally, and you change your name and you enter this essence, it's it's just like, I feel like you kind of got to feel it to, to really understand um, what's going on with that. And that was like such a strong glamour. Like my name was Scarlet. And like when I walked into the club and I put on my like, freaking thigh high red vinyl boots Hell yes. I was scarlet <laughs> and no one could fuck with me and like I was the baddest bitch and like I was this like dominatrix which is so funny because like in my personal sex life I am not a dom <laughs> I am not a dominatrix <laughs> and it just is it just happened like it was just so interesting and um yeah I really think presentation is like the best glamour in my opinion it's quick mm-hmm. and it's so effective because not only are you having others perceive you in this way? You're feeling different. You know this, like when you're wearing a big, you know, gray t-shirt, yeah, that might be comfy, but you might not feel the best. You might not feel the sexiest, but when you put on what it is that makes you feel sexy, like you're a different person. You're a bad bitch. Like mm-hmm. just putting on clothes, putting on some lipstick, putting on your good, your good perfume. Like it is this transformation. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I love how you said that because it reminds me so much of invoking energies when we're talking about glamour Mm -hmm. magic and then you doing exotic dancing and then just like assuming this archetype, having it totally envelop your being and you become someone else. You become this like that's that's witchcraft. That's so magical that you even literally. Yeah. I mean, did you find well now I'm just curious, we're gonna tangent for a second. Did you find that you had to do a lot more like protective glamours when Mm. you were an exotic dancer, or was it actually not that bad? No, I definitely did. And I mean, it was, it was, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, I'm, you're touching people, you're like in their space. And there is this essence. I always say like the strip club is like taking an adventure through the underworld. Like everyone's uh, facades are ripped off. I don't know why you get a man in the VIP room. He will tell you his whole life story. He will tell you everything that's ever happened. He will cry he will ask you to hold him like it it is wild and I never expected it like it is crazy and it yeah there was a lot of times it was very healing and I felt like a sort of facilitator and like this like sacred divine feminine force that was helping these men like heal their trauma and it felt really awesome in that way but um because of that too like people just like trauma dump their energy is all over the place And you're dealing with a very hectic space with a lot of energies and, you know, sexual energy can go many different ways. And so, yeah, a lot of protection was, was necessary. And I mean, physical protection, of course, if anyone is an exotic dancer, if you wear boots, I always had a knife (laughs) just like hooked onto the inside of my boot, just in case, just in case you gotta, gotta protect yourself. And, um, but yeah, so, I mean, there was a lot of like, just going in the bathroom, doing a little ritualistic hand washing and like sprinkling some water over my aura and just doing mm-hmm. anything I could in the moment. Mm-hmm. And I think um, for anyone who maybe is dancing or anything, having a little altar at your um, at your vanity area is really nice, a nice grounding place to come back to. Um, and, and yeah, you can kind of raise the energy there too as well. And I found that, yeah. I don't know why, but the strip club has like the most pagans I've ever met. It doesn't what? matter where you go. I was dancing in Kansas and I went, I worked at two clubs in Kansas and there were always witches. They were, they were always around. They were always, it was like the sweetest group of people ever. And wow. there was always at least one witch. Yeah. Wow. And you, you always know each other. You're just like, oh, you're doing you're witchcraft it. over there. You're <laughs> yeah. it. Oh my goodness. Oh my yeah, God. I can't exactly. wait to talk about like you and sex magic and that and all of mm. that. So I have a question from a channel member and the question is, are there any quick or on the go glamours for someone that doesn't often use makeup or is allergic to makeup and jewelry? What would you mm. say for that? Yeah. If you can use fragrance, I really think just appealing to the senses and having something pre-charmed for on the go. Um, also like casting a bubble is really good and like easy. I feel like no one talks about it. Like it's like really fucking helpful and useful and especially if it is like you're needing some protection like just visualizing casting some sort of bubble around you I I like to go crazy people might not love this but I like to add some swords like I said um or mirrors you know and just keeping it like you know those rooms that are just like all mirrors and it confuses people Mm -hmm. yeah mirrored that bubble so that if you're trying to like hide or whatever or um yeah, I think working with visualization on the go is really, really beneficial. And I love using visualization and um, you could work with your chakras, like your solar plexus, put a little sun in there, bring the sun into your solar plexus right. and magnetize whatever it is. If there's a person, um, 
And uh, yeah, on the go, like I said, I think for me personally, I love evoking the senses and that's probably being like a Venus ruled person. Like the senses are very important to me. So yeah. um, using a perfume, if you can, even if it's like an all natural, just like some sort of like herbal blend. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I think that pre-charged stuff is where mm -hmm. it's at for low energy. Um, even if it's just the lotion that you're applying to your skin, if you're a person that doesn't do makeup or a person that doesn't even wear jewelry, I would just focus on, I mean, shampoo and conditioner. That's another mm -hmm. thing that you can enchant. I mean, everybody's got to have soap on their body at some point. Right. So yeah. like enchant your <laughs> soap, you know, like I hope people are washing the soap. Come on people. But like, <laughs> Um, yeah. I think that would be like the bare bones. Um, and then just having things pre enchanted. So on a weekly basis, you can just grab and go. You can even mm -hmm. one, one thing that I've done for myself is in the shower, I have almost like this mini altar in the shower. Cause I have this little like inlet where it's got like a lot of space and my fiance takes up zero space. So I'm like, fine, I'll use it all. And <laughs> so on that, I have, um, different, um, shampoos and soaps or whatever for different intentions that are like pre-charged. So it's like mm -hmm. super easy to do glamor magic when you're just washing your hair for the day with a specific shampoo or whatever. So I think that's a pretty, um, easy thing for sure. And I love everything yeah. you said. I just, yes, yes to all yeah. of that. I want to add one more thing too. It's oh, just yeah, yeah. like another really easy thing yeah. um, for like grounding your energy, especially if you're somebody who is similar to us, where you're like in that air element and you're kind of like, you know, all over the place, lack of grounding. Um, I know for me, like I get really anxious at grocery stores. Um, mm. I have pretty bad anxiety and I just feel like when I go into grocery stores, like I feel everyone's energy sometimes. And I have a really hard time, uh, just in like really crowded places and grocery stores have horrible lights wearing yeah. a hat, like bringing a hat with you or a bandana that you can just like throw on, you can keep it in your car. And if you're going into a place that causes you a lot of anxiety or, um, it, it's just like a lot of energy, pop it on that cap covering your crown and, and like doing that with the intention of like keeping your energy to yourself. There's no need to be picking up other people's shit. There's no need to be like thinking about that, you know, mm. really just like it's protective, it's grounding and it keeps, I just feel like literally when I'm not wearing some sort of like veil, my thoughts, my everything is like, Ooh, we're going to go. And like, you know, <laughs> we're gonna go pick up on that person's energy. Like subconsciously, yeah. I'm like, I don't care. I don't want to talk to that person. Like I'm not trying to feel their energy right now. So just, it literally keeps that shit down. Mm -hmm. And I like it is <laughs> so that that's helpful for me. I totally agree with you. Like, yes, the veiling or not even, it doesn't even have to be official veiling. It can be literally mm -hmm. just be putting a hat on, but like covering the crown. So oh. helpful. I hate grocery stores. I cannot go out in public. It is so anxiety inducing. <laughs> like yeah. that is the worst. It is so bad. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, thank you for throwing that in there. And I think like you just made my brain stir because the outfits, I mean, everything, not just down to the soaps and the lotions and the makeups and the jewelry, but also the, the colors that we're wearing and going into your closet and having specific out outfits that are assigned for specific in intentions. I know for my invisibility glamour, I have a very specific, I either wear gray or brown because they're very just mm -hmm. blah, right? They're so blah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I have specific outfits that I can wear. And then I put those outfits on and then I kind of do this little zipper thing. I don't know how else to explain it, but it's almost like I zip open a little portal. Um, and then I visualize myself and then I actually walk through the portal and then I zip it closed. And then from that point forward until I zip myself back into this plane, I am totally invisible. And so I can just go throughout the day. I don't make eye contact with anybody. Everyone leaves me alone. It's absolutely fabulous. Fabulous. So I recommend so that nice. to all the anxious girlies out there or non girlies, <laughs> because like when you just want to go incognito and you have high anxiety, it's a great glamour. You just zip yourself into invisibility. And then when you get home, I zip myself back out. So, I mean, I think it's important to always end a ritual if you start a ritual. So you're not hmm. just like walking around forever invisible and then kind of feeling weird, you know, finish it up when yeah. you're done. But <laughs> yeah. That would be um, another one. So the next question I have for you from a channel member, how do you glamour yourself to appeal to someone sexually or to appear like you are their perfect match? Mm. That's such a good question that I want to unpack so much about. Right. <laughs> I think that just like from me, I love not trying to, and of course this was not applicable when I was in my dancer days, but I really like to focus on yourself and how you feel rather than focusing on like what the other person wants. Um, and that's just like a personal thing for me. It just doesn't work for me. Hasn't worked out great when you try to make yourself, uh, you know, really seductive to this other person, because either 
that's just a fling and that's totally fine and you can totally do that or it's going to wear off and you're going to see how they actually think about you unless you want to continue to do these glamours every day for your life and I don't think you want to do that um but what I'll say is like when I was a dancer that was the thing that I um did a lot of and I think one thing I really recommend is merging psychology and witchcraft because we all know that witchcraft is just spooky psychology so read the book um the art of seduction by robert green it's an amazing book it's it's uh it's telling of its time and so there are some like very heteronormative things that he says and it's like ugh, you know um written in the 90s so keep that in mind and like just don't even listen to those parts but it is really good with how it talks about um how people are seduced and it's really i think an important thing to read to know not to how to not be seduced, I guess, if that makes sense, how to be aware of what somebody is, uh, is doing. Um, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. And like, you know, maybe you're in the industry and that's like what you do. And so what I found was, um, again, connect to like your essence and what you give off. And like, even if it is an alter ego, like it was for me, Scarlett, she was this dom. She was this like <laughs> fun, like exciting, like all about pleasure. She didn't work, you know, and, and if you read uh, the art of seduction, you'll see very quickly what archetype that is. And that's the siren. Um, and that archetype appeals really strongly to people who are uh, kind of forced into their masculinity. Maybe they're hyper masculine uh, and it's generally facade. So people who are in the military, people who are in those like more brute force Mm -hmm. sort of occupations. And lucky for me, my club was literally outside the gate of a army base. So it worked for me really well. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when these people, I mean, no one is like, I mean, I'm not going to say no one, but a lot of people who are hyper masculine are like forced to be that way. They don't want to be like, blah, 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 you know, and there's so much to crack open about that. And so um, what they really look for when being seduced is someone who will free them from the reins of, of being this big old guy and say, hey, let's have fun. Like, let's just have a good time. Like, you know, we're going to appeal to the very seductive side. It's a very seductive um, kind of archetype to play. It's not sustainable if you're looking to make this a relationship because uh, you probably have a job and no one is this like ideal siren. And we look at like historical, I know this is going into a ramble, but we look at historical figures and both Marilyn Monroe and Cleopatra both worked with this archetype. And you see how that treats a person when they have to uphold that stereotype their entire life to keep up that glamour. And I mean, I think we can all say that Marilyn Monroe uh, had a glamour of, like that glamour magic was yeah, potent absolutely. and has, yeah, has completely like seduced the entire world for generations. Um, but we know that she was this very intelligent person who cared very much about work and very much about having a family and and you know so much happened in her life that was really sad and um I think that that's kind of a story of how glamour magic can go wrong if if you're forced to uh keep up that that crazy uh you know appeal but yeah I'm just trying to circle back to that question I think that getting in tune with what makes you feel sexy because at the end of the day, when you're radiating and you're exuding sexuality, that is seductive. Um, I do think there are certain types of people you attract naturally. Um, I think if you are looking to seduce a specific person, kind of like get in touch with what that person's energy is. And generally people are seduced by the opposite of their energy. So like I said, hyper-masculine people uh, are going to be very, very attracted to very feminine, very soft, and very seductive people, you know, like Marilyn Monroe, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, and there's plenty of other archetypes to go into, um, but I think mainly focusing on what makes you feel sexy. So tuning into what your power colors, your power fabrics are, your bad bitch energy, your signature makeup, if you wear makeup or jewelry or scent, because that is at the end of the day going to make you feel very sexy and sensual and powerful and confident. And that's what's going to do it. So yeah. that's my personal take. <laughs> I so agree with that because it's di- it's different for everyone. I mean, you could probably mm-hmm. instruct somebody somewhat how to be a siren, but that other person may not be attracted to the siren archetype. So it's mm-hmm. really more about like figuring out what type of archetype that person is going to be attracted to. And also just exuding this um, confidence is really, really sexy, no matter who that you who you are. So I totally agree with that. You did mention perfume and that kind of like goes into mm-hmm. another question that I had from a channel member is, um, do you use perfume in your glamour? 
magic practice and kind of what's your experience? Like I know there are some people that really pay attention to the notes of a perfume and get really like scientific. Some people just go off the scent and how it makes them feel. So if you want to kind of talk about, you know, perfume in your practice and what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So I think if I know the notes, like if it is written out for me, I'm using it, but I am not like that good at like (laughs) sniffing out the notes and like really working with that. So, um, I have a perfume company that I like a lot and they'll list out the notes and I'll, yeah, I'll use that. But I think I would say for me more so it is about how it makes you feel because I think that my specific style of glamour magic is all about how am I feeling and, and how like, yeah, if, cause if you put on like this tight corset and this perfume that has all these notes that are connected to the goddess and like Venus or whatever, but you hate the smell of it. Like Chanel number five, have you guys smelt that? It is like oh. not good. It's, oh. it's not <laughs> like it is like what Marilyn Monroe wore to bed. It was like the signature sexy scent. And in my opinion, it doesn't smell good at all. And so if I were to put on Chanel number no. five and a tight little corset and be like, you know, but I feel <laughs> uncomfortable. I feel like I smell like a grandma. Like I am no longer exuding sexuality because mm-hmm. I am not in tune with that energy. So I think more so than like paying attention to the notes for me um, is how it makes me feel. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, I think the perfume company that you like, is it Dossier? Mm -hmm. Is that the one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love them too, because, um, what do I have? I have a signature scent and I don't even remember what it's called. It's like Amber something. It's Amber. Is it Amber Vanilla? I think it might be. Are we the same? That's mine. Are you serious? Yeah. Because it's, um, yeah, it's, it's basically like the kind of like their version of YSL's Black Opium. Yeah. Um, if we're talking about the same one and I have that perfume as well, it was a gift. There's no way I'm buying that much, that expensive of a perfume. Oh, I um, bought it, <laughs> but whatever, <laughs> it's fine. It's so good. It smells so good. And to me, that is like peak seduction because it's mm-hmm. got like that depth and it's like got some darkness to it. Mm-hmm. And it, you can tell by how I look, like darkness is a big part of my like seductiveness. And like, I'm not the light flowy aphrodite like it's very yes. lilith over here yeah. um and yeah exactly it, that i love it's amber so vanilla funny. i love I wonder, that that's both of ours well i, I it think is. it's amber vanilla now i have to go get it after this and see if it's yeah. actually let me pause okay i'm back this is so funny. um <laughs> so it's amber cherry that's the one that i got <gasps> me. i love that one too though it's so good i it's well, so I good all, i think i we so my partner and i ordered like 15 of their perfumes so we could sniff them all and then we just like <laughs> sent all of them back yeah. and then so i chose amber cherry for me um because it just like it felt like me it just so mm-hmm. felt anyways um and my partner there was one I think it's called Fugger Oud and it, that's the oh. one that my partner wears and I was like oh this is amazing so yeah anyways delicious and spicy so <laughs> I love yeah, that yeah and cherry is so fun mm-hmm. and I think cherry like is is exotic like it's like yeah. sexual like yeah. you think of like you know tying a cherry yeah. you know stem with your tongue like it's sexy yes. yeah Yeah, I totally agree. I don't wear it all the time because I'm a person that I really like natural smells of a person. I even Mm -hmm. like people's body odor. It's weird. I think natural (laughs) pheromones are wonderful. Let me smell your weird armpits. Okay. Like I'm here for (laughs) it. I love don't, that. Don't shave. Just let it be what it is. Um, yeah. But yeah. I mean, so I love natural pheromones, but there are times and I, and I only put this on when I specifically want to bring in that sexy, like siren type energy. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that perfumes can be really fun to play with. And I usually, I agree with what you said about Chanel number no. five. I've never smelled it, but when mm. I smell like these really popular perfumes, they're so synthetic and disgusting to me. Mm. I just yeah. want something that's like way more natural. I don't want synthetic crap in it. And I think that's probably mm-hmm. why you and I, as like more pagan witchy people like Dossier, because it's not, P- Dossier is going to be like, hey, if, sponsor me, by the way. Hello. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not trying to, I'm not sponsored. I'm not affiliated or anything. Um, Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So we kind of already touched on this, but I wanted to ask how much color plays into your glamour Mm. magic practice. So fucking much. Okay, Mm -hmm. literally so much. Um, I, okay, so I'm just going to shout out my friend Gabby, the stylist witch. So she's just at the stylist witch on Instagram. She is phenomenal. And she is really who has helped me get into like color and that expression and, and how that feels. Um, she is like a fashion stylist. She does intuitive styling and yeah, she's a fashion witch. 
And so color plays such a huge role for me. I'm a very visual person and I have a story that I tell just to like get the point across. But um, there's one day that I was just like feeling like shit. I was in like my big cozy, like gray, you know, big t-shirts, like a men's XL, which like I love sitting in those. And I was feeling bad that day. And I just was like trying to go through the motions and like do things that make me feel better. And I wanted to be comfy. And I was just feeling like shit. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try a little experiment. And so I put on this little still comfy yellow crop top and like some comfy pants that were just a brighter color because I still wanted to be comfy. I was still just at home. And I immediately felt so much better. And yellow is not my color. It's not my favorite color. um, But this yellow energy just like immediately made me feel different. And I held myself differently. And so I think color and also like form and how you feel really plays a part because when you're wearing like a big old droopy thing that can be so nice on your cozy days when you're just trying to be cozy and and comfy but Mm -hmm. if you're feeling a little emotionally droopy too like maybe like wear something that makes you feel freer I love like bandos and bralettes because I feel like like I could be I would be naked all day if I could I really would because I love just like I don't want to feel a bunch of things on me I don't want to feel anything tight I just want to be free so I think color and form are so important and I love using um, color magic, but also like you briefly cut out. So I am stitching this next thread together. Go ahead. (laughs) continue. Okay, cool. So I love using um, like the planetary energy also in addition to color magic and color psychology. So like if the uh, like today, you know, it's it's a double Virgo in the sky right now. Right. Yeah. I think maybe not. Almost. Am I tripping? I think almost. It's happening this week. It's happening this week though, at some point. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, the moon was just in Scorpio yesterday. So let me just use yesterday. So the sun was in Virgo. No, the sun was in Leo. The moon was in Scorpio. Mm-hmm. So I might like bring in some black or some deep red or some deep purple for Scorpio. If I'm trying to honor that energy or work with it or, you know, try to like coax it to be nice to me, like kind of mm-hmm. like work that energy in. Um, and so you can use like that kind of energy, or you can just go with color magic and say like, okay, like I want to feel a little bit peppier. I know that pink is my peppy color and also understand that I think it's different for everyone. Um, Like yellow is going to elicit something different for everybody. Black is going to feel different for everyone. And so I think Mm -hmm. having a really nice moment to get in touch with yourself, how those colors feel for you, how uh, textures feel for you and, and forms and stuff and get in touch, try to like step away from like big fashion and also stop looking at like size tags it doesn't matter size like is so stupid throughout companies wear what it's makes so you feel comfortable stupid. it's not it's so dumb and no it's, it's so dumb yeah anyways <laughs> and no yeah I think that needs to be said and that's really important and um and and yeah I think it's it's so much more about how you feel when you're wearing that rather than you know what it says but also yeah yeah, yeah. I but agree. get in tune with your with your energy <laughs> with your yeah I did a um, yeah. I did a whole long video about the biopsychology of color because I'm crazy about color and I'm obsessed and I feel like there's there's a biopsychology aspect there is a certain way that colors seemingly seem to affect all of our brains regardless of how you who you are but then there's also cultural context where different mm-hmm. cultures view colors as you know having different meanings and then there's also personal context that you have to take into consideration your personal memories and your feelings towards a certain color like if there was somebody from your past that you hated and then they always wore that color of course mm-hmm. you're going to have an aversion to that color don't wear that color like it's yeah. very much like a personal experience and i agree with you i i do color magic all the time. That is one thing I do do for all of my videos is every single video Mm -hmm. I do, I pick a specific color for a reason. Sometimes, um, I want to enhance what it is that I'm talking about in the video, but then there are some times where I want to subdue how I look in order to kind of Mm -hmm. oppose what I'm talking about and marry Mm -hmm. that with uh, a more comforting, like when I was talking about talking about controversial, um, issues, sometimes I do want to wear something that's a little bit more light or comforting to kind of help, um, work with that controversial topic that we're going to discuss. Not all the times, because sometimes I'm just like ragey and I want to do what I want, but (laughs) I think, think that yeah. <laughs> like color can be really important for that. And um, okay, so we have one more question and then I want to talk to you about books and then we can move on to sex cool. magic. Okay, so um, what advice would you give to someone who struggles to feel pretty sexy or beautiful? Mm. Yes, I think that um, unfortunately that is a common thing and it sucks and I feel 
for you and we've all I don't want to say like we've all been there but I've definitely been there and I'm pretty sure we all I think <laughs> I want to say we all I didn't want to like invalidate or be like we all go through it you know no, but, like I, know. I really do think that like yeah. yeah I mean like I know I've gone through that and I think for me a big thing was stepping away from what was pretty like what I thought I was supposed to look like like where I'm from tan skin blonde hair like bleach blonde hair and like being athletic is like the epitome of pretty and that was not me (laughs) and so like I had to go through like being this little pale like skinny girl and like I didn't fit in and um obviously the eczema situation too and so I think it's so hard but really trying to trying to like unbrainwash yourself from what we've been told is beautiful and what we've been told is pretty and I think that finding what you think is beautiful in yourself. And a lot of times there are things that we find beautiful about ourselves, but we've kind of been brainwashed to think that it's not beautiful. So I know for me, like I got made fun of my nose a lot and like, it was, yeah, I've got like, I don't even know if it's like, Norwegian or what it is but it definitely is not like the swoop nose oh I know and you're so about. yeah yeah you have and such so, a cute nose though by the way I just thank to you so, anyways <laughs> thank you and and so like all my life growing up in those formative years like I was just like my nose is ugly because people have made fun of me so <laughs> I think like doing what I thought were just stupid affirmations and saying, I love my nose. Like my nose is so beautiful in the mirror every morning. And of course, at first I was like, this is so dumb. Like I hate this. I started genuinely to love my nose and to see my nose through just like a clear window, not a window that's fogged up with what other people say is the perfect nose or, or whatever. And so, and then I was just like, my nose is really unique and it is my heritage and it connects me to my family. And I don't need to fit this stupid mold to be pretty and also I don't give a shit if anyone thinks my nose is anything like I care about how I feel and so I think really if we're using that window analogy cleaning that fucking window trying to get people's opinions out of there and that's a challenge and it's really hard with how our society is set up with media and uh, all these models and photoshop and plastic surgery and I'm not against plastic surgery at all but it's a hard standard to meet to feel pretty. So I think trying to separate yourself from that and finding what you find beautiful about yourself, even if it's just like, my skin is really clear today and I'm really thankful for that and I feel really beautiful or I feel really beautiful when I'm making art and that makes me feel beautiful because I think beauty and prettiness, it doesn't have to be an aesthetic thing. It can be a vibe. Like it can be Mm -hmm. that, you know, when I'm snuggling my cat and I'm in like my flowy dress, like I feel pretty. I feel like a little princess you know, things like that. So I hope that was helpful. It's a journey. And I think everyone still like has bad days and has to pick themselves up. I mean, if I'm scrolling on Instagram for too long or TikTok, you know, it's easy to compare yourself and get down about yourself. Yeah, I agree with that. I think you said that so beautifully. It's so, so true. I just kind of wanted to add my own um, perspective too, because I relate to what you said about not fitting into the the normal standard of beauty or whatever, um, struggling with weight my entire life. I was a super obese kid and you can imagine getting picked on and it was terrible and it was just, it ruined my self-esteem. And then I became a teenager. There was literally that moment, you know, you see in like the teen movies where over one summer I got really skinny and beautiful. And then all of a sudden all the boys were like, Hey, and it was, isn't that so traumatic though? It was so like, yes, I still felt like the fat kid inside. I was still the fat kid. And then I was like, Whoa, these guys are talking to me now. I'm somewhat desirable, but I still felt like a weirdo and it just like stays with you. And so then after I graduated high school, I really got into like bodybuilding and I got really fit, like really strong. And I started to actually, for the first time, feel really sexy when I was strong. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because I was skinny or whatever, because this was like before like big girls were desirable as far as muscle goes. Like we were encouraged to be thin and frail and like, you know, have slender shoulders or whatever. And here I was with like these big athletic shoulders, like bench pressing. And, and I felt sexy though. Like I finally, 
finally stepped into my masculine for me and I felt so good about myself. And then from there, I went through so many fluctuations. I'd go through a bad breakup. I'd start binge eating, gain a bunch of weight back and then feel like shit about myself. And um, now at this point in my life, I have a health issue that's causing me to gain weight again, which is extremely frustrating because I still work out and, and eat well. And it's frustrating that when your body doesn't reflect that. And so I have had those struggles, feeling sexy and feeling beautiful when I look in the mirror. And I just have to say, there is nothing more powerful than standing in front of the mirror completely fucking naked and just staring at yourself and forcing mm -hmm. yourself to say that you love yourself and that you appreciate yourself. You love every inch of your body for exactly how it is today. So I encourage everyone to go stand in front of the mirror naked for one. Um, for two, I think it's really... It was really helpful for me to um, watch videos of other people with bodies similar to mine being so confident. Like if mm -hmm. I found videos on TikTok of really curvy girls just being like super confident in their outfits, they looked fabulous. And I was like, shit, yeah, I feel sexy after watching that. So I think like watching other people be confident in their own skin as well can be really helpful. So I just had to like share all of that because you just brought it all up for me and I was like yeah everybody stare at themselves naked um yes. <laughs> I so love important. that and also like what you said about seeing other people who like you felt like reflected you like that is it's been like psychologically proven that in cultures whatever is like cheered on and said this is beautiful people start to think that it really beauty is literally kind of a brainwash and mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. a, a great thing is to like watch people being celebrated who you feel like you look like and you you um connect with because that'll brainwash you if mm -hmm. we're all getting brainwashed let's be selective you know what I'm saying yeah. yes. <laughs> yes I love that I love the trend right now where we're focusing more on strength rather than being mm. like, forcing ourselves to stop eating yeah. forcing ourselves to be skinny and like we want women to be strong whatever that means for them I mm -hmm. mean you know strength is uh subjective, I guess, but yeah. yeah. So great advice. Thank you for answering yeah. that. Um, let's talk about books a little bit. So there was a question from a channel member where they were wondering if you read a specific book, have you read the book glamor magic by Deborah Castellano? And then if so, what did you think about it? And then my follow-up question to that is, are there any other glamor magic books that you would recommend? Yes. Okay. So I feel like there's a lack of glamour magic books on the market, which makes me sad. I have read that book. I liked it. I think that, you know, I think with all the glamour magic books that I'm going to talk about really quick, it's, they're all so different. And I think they're tackling a different thing. I think glamour magic, um, if that's what it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one that this person asked about, it's like kind of, it's very journaling and like shadow working. Um, so instead of being like, you know, this is what glamour magic is. These are some spells and rituals we're going to do. Um, it's definitely a more of a deep dive. Um, I liked it. I thought it was good. We read it in my Patreon. I want to say maybe Aries season. And I had some qualms, I remember. Uh, and I, I don't fully remember them verbatim. I know that she did do this strong, like, us versus them othering thing, being like, you know, you're, if you're a witch, like you're a very oppressed person and, and, you know, you need to know that. And it, it kind of, it just didn't make me feel super great. It kind of reached a point where I was like, like, I am all about acknowledging oppression, but it did feel like it got to a point that was almost like not healthy or beneficial. And I was just like, I'm just going to note that like, I, I don't resonate with that. And like, you know, I, it just, it just like was a weird ick for me, but I felt like the content was good. And I think it's more of like a, like an exploration and a journey. It's a book you want to really sit down with for a while and, and explore and go through the depths. Um, yes, I really like The Glam Witch by Michael Herkes. They are an amazing author. I love them. And um, it's, it's not, it's interesting because it's like half glamour magic, mm -hmm. half like Lilith. And Ooh. that was when I, yeah, it's really fun. And so um, like, I think like they have glam this like acronym and it's like the great Lilith Lilithian arcane mysteries or something. I can't remember exactly the acronym, but it is like this glamour magic through the lens of Lilith, her mythology. And also Michael Herkes just gives their like, ex like their experience using glamour magic and has some very practical advice of like how to stand, how to walk, like how to command a room, which I feel like is really good when you're first starting out, because those are the things like your posture is going to help you 
like feel that energy. And I think that's where you need to start. Um, you know, and they go into makeup and, and I love Lilith. I mean, we've got Lilith right back here. Like I love her. And so I, I think that book is amazing. And I just read Glamour Witch. It's always like Glamour Magic or Glamour Witch. So I'm trying to get it right <laughs> by Sophie St. Thomas, which was really fun. Sophie St. Thomas is a really fun author and she's Scorpio and it comes through. Ooh. And that is like the most casual of the three books. Like if you're, mm. and that goes into a lot of um, the history of makeup. It's pretty makeup focused. Um, I thought the, the history of makeup was really interesting in seeing how that's kind of tied to uh, the suppression of female sexuality uh, throughout cultures, um, but also how like makeup has also been like a non-gendered thing throughout cultures, like forever, and was like really celebrated in masculine presenting folks as like this badass warrior paint. And I'm just like, come on, guys, bring back the eyeliner, bring back the short shorts. Like I love <laughs> to see it. Like I love men. I love it when they wear eyeliner. Like Me too. let's bring it back. A man so, with eyeliner is just like. I love it. Oh my God. I love it's probably it. Probably the whole reason I like pop punk music. <laughs> oh, I love it. Anyways. <laughs> so good. Anyway. So yeah, those are the three books that I uh, have read about glamour magic. Like I said, there's not a ton Yeah. Um, and I'm always on the hunt. So if anybody has any, feel free to comment it below. I'd love to read more. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I agree with all that. Um, I haven't actually read a lot of glamour magic books. It's more mainly, I guess, personal gnosis and experimentation. So I'm glad you have mm -hmm. recommendations because I don't. So thank you for that. <laughs> absolutely oh gosh okay so are you ready to move on to sex magic do you want to yeah let's yes. do it I'm so excited okay so we've <laughs> talked we've talked a lot about different types of glamours at this point um I'm gonna have time, time stamps on this video so people can you know skip forward to the section if they want to so we've talked a lot about different glamours we've talked about how to feel sexy and so now that we get into sex magic I want to more talk about the actual act I want to talk about using orgasm for manifestation I want to talk about just all the energy work that kind of goes into that so let's act you know what let's start with like a basic definition how would you define sex magic hmm. such a hard thing to define because I think there's so so many ways to use it but I do think I the most common probably the most common definition would be using your climax to manifest something that's like the most common simplified thing but I think for me sex magic is any use of sexual or sensual energy to bring about what you're trying to bring about, whether that is a manifestation or just feeling fucking good. Because I think that a lot of times we're in this like masculine focus, like I want to get this job and do this thing and do this thing. And like, there's always a goal in mind. And I like to, I mean, I love using my sex magic for my magic in that way, but I also love to use sex magic just to feel and just to connect to my senses. And I think that uh, a lot of times we're especially femme folks who are in like hetero relationships. Like I think a lot of times uh, we're kind of like taught to like really be focused on the other person and like, how are they perceiving me? And like, you know, it's almost performative, I think sometimes. And uh, it takes work to break that down. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think like being so conscious about how am I feeling? How can I make this feel better for me? Like, and the goal can literally just be like having an amazing orgasm and feeling good or having a self-pleasure practice. Um, so anyway, I would define sex magic as, uh, yeah, using sexual energy for a desire. It could be even sensual energy. I don't think you have to orgasm. You, even if you're a person who can't orgasm, like just raising whatever energy you can, just making yourself feel good. And if you're a person who is like working their way towards being comfortable with self-pleasure, um, just doing sensual things like a sensual massage can yeah. be as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I, I don't have to add anything else because you said it all. That's That was perfect. So <laughs> thank you for that. Do you use your, so let's get into like the nitty gritty. Do you use your own energy, like your own orgasms and do, you know, solo adventures? I don't know what <laughs> solo adventures. What is the best way to explain? What is the best? I usually just say self-pleasure. <laughs> self-pleasure. Thank you. A solo adventures. Uh, listen, solo adventure. I'm, I'm a gamer at heart. And so like Love everything, that. when I talk, everything's an adventure. Everything's a side quest everything's over. right um it so it <laughs> is it more like solo pleasure or do you have a partner or do you do like a little mix of both yeah so um I do have a partner I prefer uh solo what do you call it solo adventures yeah <laughs> um, I think that so I've done sex magic with my partner and that's really fun and great I do prefer solo um it's just 
I feel like I can focus so much more on my intention and what I'm trying to bring and I can set the scene and take my time and you don't have to worry about anybody else. And like, I also think it's healing to do Mm -hmm. self-pleasure. And I think that, um, I know like growing up in middle America, like a very hyper Christian area, like I had so much guilt around sex, self-pleasure and like masturbation. And like, it was literally something that made me feel horrible because I was raised Catholic. I had to like tell a priest when I was like 13, you know, in confession oh. that I had self-pleasured because like otherwise you would have hell. Right. And so that is like weird and traumatic and puts so much guilt on you. So I think that if anyone resonates with that or just general guilt around the self-pleasure practices, like it is healing in the way to be like, this is sacred. This is sacred because it feels good. This is sacred because my body is sacred. Yeah, I'm definitely like a left-handed path where it's like, everything is sacred like sexuality is sacred and 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 yeah (laughs) yeah so I agree with that I definitely there's a time and a place for both for me I do Mm. use my partner in sex magic um my partner is not for anybody that's curious my partner is not a magical practitioner at all I basically instruct them what to do and they give me their energy and then I channel both of our energies towards the goal so it's kind of like I'm bringing their energy into me and then I'm the one that's directing it where it needs to go I will say we're gonna mm, no, I'm going to save that for another question that we have. Um, <laughs> but I do love uh, solo adventures and I really find that it's super empowering. Like you were talking about, yeah. I mean, there, there is even a God, there's an entity that I'm working with right now. And I don't want to give too much detail, but I offer my orgasms to that entity and it's very empowering. And it's a way mm-hmm. of like, when you think of offerings to entities, you think of like, Oh, a cookie, a cup of wine or whatever. I'm like, have an orgasm for that. Yeah. Like, why not <laughs> Be, yeah. you know, feel that pleasure? So I think that's a really um, wonderful way to utilize sex magic apart from just using it to manifest, but using it as an offering, your pleasure can be an offering. Mm-hmm. Um, So yeah, I like to do like a mix of both. And so with that in mind, then what role does consent play for you? If you're mainly Mm -hmm. doing, um, solo, oh my gosh, why do I keep calling it adventures? Solo pleasure. It's okay. (laughs) What, what did you, what terminology did you use? I just said self-pleasure, but I think solo adventure is so What is wrong with me? Oh my God. Okay. I know you mainly do self-pleasure, but if you were to do it with a partner, what's your perception on consent? Because I think there's this misconception with uh, sex magic where um, people are just taking other people's energy and doing Mm. whatever the hell they want and whatever. So I'd like you to talk about your boundaries with that. Yeah. Love that question. I love that question because the, I have seen those conversations and it is mm-hmm. something that, um, so I, I have used, uh, like partnered practice, both with my husband's energy and just with my energy. You don't mm-hmm. have to take any of their energy. It literally could just be that they are helping you come to an orgasm and you are sending your orgasm and your climactic energy out for your intention. Uh, it isn't inherently like you're stealing their seed, you're stealing, you're stealing their energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, just because they are offering you that pleasure and helping you get to orgasm doesn't mean necessarily that you are like siphoning their energy off from them um, without their consent. I think it's a an interesting question. And I think with my situation, like my husband, he's not a magical practitioner either. And he has like willingly like joined and brought his energy into, um, you know, spells that like we're doing for like our home or like something that has to do with both of us that he is, he's bringing his energy into. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's really wonderful. I think, yeah, I think when it comes to consent, I think like, yeah, if you're going to siphon their energy off, like if you're planning on using their energy, yeah, maybe say something, (laughs) but I think (laughs) if you are just like in your own world and like they're helping you get to an orgasm and you're going to send your orgasm up there, um, I think you're fine. I don't think, and I think it can be really weird. Like it it can be weird if you don't know this person very well. Um, you know, and I think there's also a lot of like puritanical culture, even in like the sex magic space, Mm -hmm. I think a lot more in like the new agey section where it is so slut shamey and saying like, don't let like one night stands into your womb. It's going to fuck up your womb space. And it's like, okay, let's just stop right there. Like literally let's stop right there Mm -hmm. because if sex feels good, if everyone's consenting and it feels fucking good, your pussy's going to be happy. Like whatever you have is going to be happy. You're going to be yeah. happy. Yeah. Um, hopefully we don't get demonetized for that. You can bleep me oh, out. We're totally getting demonetized. Yeah. This entire conversation, we've been yeah. dropping 
bombs. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, yeah. I think I think so. That's just one thing I do want to say because it is just like so icky, and I hate seeing slut shaming in the sex magic space. And like, it's just so gross. And mm-hmm. I've even seen like people I used to follow who like I didn't really know that well. It was just like they posted sex magic stuff, literally continuing that idea of like you really shouldn't have sex before the third date because your energies like aren't aligned and it's like shut the fuck up like yeah, literally no. <laughs> take a take a break yeah. let people do what they want to do because sex is so different for everybody mm-hmm. this was a tangent that wasn't asked for but <laughs> I'm here for I it. think yeah do what feels good if it's consensual and it feels good speak up if it doesn't like let yourself be heard then your body is going to be good. Like it's going to be good energy. Um, So yeah, ask for consent if you're planning on using someone else's energy, I feel. Um, And if you're not using their energy, do what you will with your orgasms. (laughs) Yeah, I no, I totally agree. When it comes to consent, like if you're using another person's energy during, um, you know, if you're doing sex magic and you're using both their orgasm and your uh, orgasm to manifest, Mm -hmm. then I think it's important to do, to have that level of consent just so your, your intentions are aligned. But if I'm doing something in my mind, let's say I'm having sex with my partner, I'm manifesting something in my mind or I'm focusing on a sigil or whatever, and I'm using my own energy and my own orgasm orgasm. Mm -hmm. It's none of their goddamn business. In that case, I don't feel like I need to get their consent to do something in my own mind. If I'm not even using their energy, they may be helping me get to that point of orgasm, but the orgasm is not for them. It's for me and for what I'm doing with my own body and my own, you know, my own energy. So with the consent issue, I mean, yeah, I think it only applies if you're actually going to use their energy um, intertwined with yours. But yeah, if you're just using your own energy, I don't really... And it's like when you have a long-term partner, it's kind of like implied consent after a certain point where they don't really care Mm -hmm. anyways for a lot of people. But even if you are that person where you're single, you're having one night stands, more power to you. If you want to just use your own orgasm and your own energy, you don't need to disclose to that person what you're doing in your own mind. I mean, I know that's controversial to say, but... I don't think it is. And I mean, if it's your energy, it's your energy. And Mm -hmm. I think it can be really awkward to be hooking up with someone who you don't really know and be like, can I use your orgasm for witchcraft? Right. Yeah. (laughs) You don't like, no. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So that's a whole nother level of intimacy that some people aren't ready for. And I know immediately I can hear a comment already. That's like, (laughs) well, if you're not willing to tell them that you're a witch, then you probably shouldn't be having sex with them. That's the comment that I'm immediately hearing. And I'm to that. I just want to say people can do whatever they want with their bodies. Just because it's not something that I would do because I'm more of a demisexual and I just can't, Mm. but like for other people, yeah more power to them so yeah Mm -hmm. so let's get into how we actually do sex magic like how do you Mm -hmm. actually use orgasm to manifest this is actually a question I get a lot so I'm excited to talk about it with you because I don't know if our techniques are the same or not like is Mm -hmm. it an energy that flows through you are you visualizing the intention at the moment of climax how would you use orgasm to manifest yeah so yeah at the height of orgasm, or if you can't orgasm, just the height, like wherever you can get to. Um, What I like to do is like, I focus on my root chakra and basically bring it up through my body and out through my crown. I do beforehand, like set the space, figure out what it is I'm trying to, uh, you know, just like any other spell, like figure out what it is you're trying to get and like work on some visualization then. Um, Like, let's say you're trying to like find your dream house, like maybe before you, you know, start the act, you do like figure out what it is you want in a house. And then some people, and this might be getting more like into it than we want, but some people are here for that. So yes. (laughs) Okay, cool. (laughs) Um, I think it depends on like, I think you're like how comfortable you are with it. Um, some people visualize that thing. Let's keep the house analogy, the entire sexual act. Um, And some people just as you reach that climax and you're sending that energy out like I do through my crown and through to the universe, um, just at the height of climax, visualize it. I think it can be hard when you're starting to, especially if it's like a solo practice, think of that house while you're trying to get yourself into this place. Because Mm -hmm. like, unless it's a sexy ass house, like you (laughs) might need some, you know, supplemental things like you might want to if you watch like porn, like you know, whatever it is that you, that you do to get yourself there. Uh, I think it's fine to get yourself there. And then once you're getting close and you're feeling good, then bring that visualization into mind, at least when you are sending that energy out. And just as you're approaching that climax or however high you can get, 
just, yeah, that energy through your system, up your spine and out and send that visualization, that intention out. And I love to rest in the afterglow. Do not just like pick up your phone, (laughs) you know, don't just like move on with your day. Like let yourself rest, let yourself feel the buzz or whatever it is that your body feels. Um, And I think it's like, it's obviously like a very euphoric experience. And I think that is really nice because it puts you in that pleasurable state of like, you know what, that's out there. The universe is handling it. It's been done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I, um, I don't necessarily visualize. I like how you said that though, from the root all the way out through, that's really nice. I don't do that, but I am Mm. taking that inspiration now because that sounds lovely. Um, but what I usually do because I'm a chaos magician, I work with sigils all the time. And for me, I love sigils because I can translate a specific intention phrase into an image. And then I've had so many people comment, well, what if I can't visualize what I want at the moment of climax because you're distracted you're thinking Mm. about other things and I love sigils because you don't have to think about the intention at all in fact all you have to do is literally look at the image at the moment of climax you don't have to be thinking of your intention or anything like that and if I want to be really sexy and I'm working with a partner I will even draw that sigil on their body so I can look at Mm. it there at the moment of climax okay so you can get like really creative with where you put your sigils um so that's something I really like to do. And then I also wanted to talk about thinking about the positions of giving and receiving, because I think that can be Mm. really, really helpful in sex magic as well. Um, There was a coven member that uh, that I had that taught me this. So if my coven members watching this, they're probably going to be laughing to themselves, but um, (laughs) you can play with the positions of giving and receiving. So let's say, for example, your girlfriend wants to get a, um, a job, wants to, or maybe not even a job, but wants to receive something from the universe. Maybe she wants a phone call from someone. She wants to manifest something or whatever you giving your energy to her in the form of you going down on her and giving her pleasure and putting putting yourself in the giving position and then putting her in the receiving position she is receiving all the pleasure and all of that energy mm-hmm. and she's able to manifest what it is she wants to bring into her life so i think that we can play with the energies of um, giving and receiving and even putting each other in different positions of giving and receiving as far as which partner it is that wants to manifest Um, so that was something that I wanted to add there, but yeah, I love that so much. Like that is such (laughs) a good thing to mention. And I I love that so much. I love that so much. I do want to add too, like I, um, so I've already kind of mentioned that Scarlett, my alter ego, she's like this dominatrix, which was so empowering and exciting, but did nothing for me. And I think there was like some, some work I had I had to work through with being such like a sub and being like is this bad for sex magic that I am being like like so submissive and like uh Mm -hmm. I don't know I felt like there was a little bit of shame there and then I like started to really work with with being submissive in my sex magic and realizing like this is a beautiful way to like learn to trust and to learn like especially if you're someone who works with bondage like learn to trust and being in a safe position like having a partner who you feel so safe with that they can like tie you up and like if you're into like pleasure and pain sort of like bdsm stuff like it literally like it feels so good for learning to trust the universe learning to let go because i am a control freak Mm -hmm. and experiencing this like pleasure and also uh tying that into my sex magic when I'm like tied up and like, I am not in control and I'm in this submissive place and I can trust and let go and know that I'll receive pleasure and Mm -hmm. like that I'm in a safe place to do so. And so I think it's so funny. You said you're demisexual. Mm-hmm. or is it demi-romantic demi-sexual well, I don't know I guess I, I don't should... know the terms I'm sorry I don't even know what to label myself like yeah. I honestly I don't know I just like people and I like intellect so I don't know Absolutely. where that classifies me <laughs> so. I just think that's so fun you're in that boat and I'm in this like BDSM like sex worker boat and we have these oh. like ends of the spectrum well, I like didn't... it's really fun I didn't say I wasn't into BDSM but you know that's true <laughs> We People love to hear it. Know that, you know, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, true. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, I think I just have to like, I, I'm not a person that could ever have, I don't even know if I'm going to keep this in or not. I don't that's know okay. if I could ever have like uh, a one night stand with somebody. Cause I need to be intellectually stimulated by them. Like I need mm-hmm. to have that mental connection. Um, but, but as far as my sexuality goes, I don't even know why I'm disclosing this right now. I think I'm more pansexual where I just, yes. 
it doesn't matter who they are. I've dated yeah. everyone of all de- genders. So it really mm-hmm. doesn't matter as long as they are uh, mentally stimulating for me, I'm into it. So whatever that label yeah. is, I guess. <laughs> that is so fun. I've like, I've worked with that label of like pan versus bi. And I think yeah. the definitions have changed also. Um, and like with gender acceptance and stuff. And I recently read this like definition that I felt like really helped me that um, pansexual is um, more of, like you said, like a mind thing, like a personal thing mm-hmm. has nothing to do with gender. Whereas um, bisexual being like both your gender and also other genders, but attraction to genders. And I'm like, I, I do be attracted to everyone. <laughs> And it, I don't know like <laughs> they don't need to be smart <laughs> they are just like I'm just like damn women men non-binary people everyone like everyone's hot <laughs> yeah that's so funny okay so we do have a little yeah. bit of a difference there but I, I can't there's actually, a difference yeah yeah because I can't I can't find someone attractive if I don't love their mind but it sounds yeah. like that you're like if they're hot they're hot so <laughs> It's embarrassing, but yeah. <laughs> I'm a simple woman with an Aries Mars. Like, Listen, what can I say? nothing embarrassing <laughs> about that. I love that yeah. so much. Oh my gosh, a little tangent about sexuality. You yeah. can let me know if you want me to keep this in or not. Oh um, yeah, I'm totally fine with it. So if, okay, that's good. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about how do you set the stage for sex magic? Like, do you have an altar space? Do you do something in your mind beforehand? Like, how do you get into the mood? What's what's the setting yeah. of the stage? Um, I love having a sex altar in my bedroom and I have a converted, we, this is so funny. We have this chest. Um, it's like an old chest that I, my husband had from something and we've turned it into this like little mini altar of like our sex toys and like, you know, things like that. And, um, I think having an altar is a really good place to start. Um, there is a show on Netflix called how to build a sex room. And I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. So it's so funny. The host is, is like this, like tiny, like older British lady. And it's so funny because it's like, you wouldn't imagine her to be talking about like building a sex room, but she is so fun. And um, it's, it's a really good show. And it really made me um, take into account, like, what does my sex room look like? Mm -hmm. And I don't have like a big house. So it is my bedroom. And like, just being more mindful with like colors and fabrics and like maybe having some sex toys on display for a while. I had like my sex toys, like hanging on my wall and it was like, it's so funny and like so dramatic. And (laughs) I loved it. Like it was really funny and it fit like our personalities. And, um, so yeah, I think having a sacred space for your, your sex toys, your, whatever it is that you use, your lubes and stuff. And I just like to make sure that like I am comfortable and that I feel good. Um, I do think about like visualizing what it is I'm trying to manifest or if it's just like feeling good, feeling empowered, feeling pleasure, like all the dirty clothes need to be out of the room. (laughs) Like I know what like sets me off. Mm -hmm. Um, And so just making sure my space that like looks nice, I'm able to relax. I can, I can just like have this time like the cats are in the other room like I have this space and what I usually like to do um, I tried this challenge and it was like setting a specific amount of time every day to have a self-pleasure practice which is Uh harder than it seems Mm -hmm. and so five or 10 or 20 minutes where you are like okay it's 1 p.m I'm doing my (laughs) self-pleasure practice and you know for for whatever time you know you don't have to orgasm and if you maybe you orgasm with plenty of time to spare like maybe you see how many times you can do it and just devoting this time having the sacred container where you can explore your body explore your desires and explore pleasure within your body and I think it was actually more challenging than I expected and was really fun And, um, so, so yeah, I think just like having, uh, making time for it and making sure that my space is, is conducive to Mm -hmm. me relaxing and feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. I so agree with that. I think if I'm going to have, like, I, if I think about sex magic, I actually don't do it as often as I would or that I want to, because for me, when I do sex magic, it's like a whole ritual. And I Mm. honestly just don't have the time sometimes to do a whole ritual. I know it can be a really quick thing, you know, visualize something and boom, you're there. But if I'm doing it with a partner, I want to take a bath beforehand. I want to put oils all over my body. I want to, you know, cause we have a love altar in our bedroom as well. 
where I have like a sacral chakra candle. I've got the orange candle with a sigil carved into it. I drip a little oil on it, let it drip down and let it melt, you know, doing the whole sexy thing. And for me, it's like, it's a process. It's like, you're, Mm -hmm. you're just, um, I don't know, devouring this delicious energy from the moment you get into the bath until the moment you finish in bed. It is like this whole ensemble. It's like this whole ritual. So I don't do it as often as I want to, but I would say that my rituals are very, I think the reason why I can get in the mood is because when it's time to do that, it is very sacred and I've designated everything as super sacred. So I like that you talked about your sex altar. Also hilarious that you have your sex toys up on your wall or dead at one point. It's really funny. We had to take it down when we had family in town because I was like, I don't want your mom to see this. Yeah. (laughs) uh, Well, (laughs) we we don't need to have that conversation. Yeah. Let's just hide it. (laughs) It's just, it's a a little awkward, you know, no big deal. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who struggles with how taboo sex can be? So if someone has a hard time connecting to their own pleasure, what would you say about that? Oh, so I relate because like I kind of said before, like growing up in Catholicism, it was like horrible. And, mm-hmm. you know, like I remember it even being like men can self-pleasure, but women can't. And so there was like mm-hmm. a lot of this like guilt that came with it. And even like when I worked in the sex industry, sometimes there would be like guilt that come with it. And it's, it'd be so weird. And I think having that um, awareness so you can be like, weird, I, I am turned on by creating sexual content. Like I love doing this. Why am I feeling, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling guilt? Why am I feeling tension here? Um, so I think starting with that awareness of like when that is triggered and it's, it's hard, it's a personal thing, but I think, yeah, I guess I'm trying to think of like how I really worked through it. I think it's still a process and I think it, it waxes and wanes. And sometimes like, I still am like, why do I feel, I feel a little bit weird after my se- my self-pleasure practice. Like that's, that's strange. Um, and I think, I guess for me, a, a good thing has been able to detach myself from that and be like, oh, okay. Like Catholicism's coming up right now. We don't want you. We don't want you here. Like send that off. Like mm-hmm. also for me, I think researching like I researched and saw like the the scientific studies I love science I don't understand it but I love it (laughs) and so like seeing how like self-pleasure is so good for you like it's so good for you I can trust science you know and so I can be like this is gonna help like my dopamine like this is gonna make me feel really good this is healthy psychologically speaking it's good for me to be in tune with my body yeah. And, and so or I think that there's a saying, the orgasm a day keeps the doctor away or whatever. Like yeah. everyone's busy getting <laughs> orgasms every day. <laughs> Literally Anyways, like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I love that. And, and, and yeah. So I think for me, I don't know why my brain works like that. If I'm scared of something or if something's feeling a little weird, I tend to calm myself with science. And um, so I did that. And I think just, just taking your, taking it slowly. I don't think you need to jump into it. Like I said, if you want to start with just like a massage and maybe some like nice affirmations of like my body is sacred and my sexuality is sacred and whatever like you have, I don't know. I came up with this like my pussy is a pleasure portal. Yeah, it's like so Instagram and stupid. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) It's like to the point like, you know, the new age girlies are going to love that. Um, (laughs) But like. I love that. And I love the reclamation of that word. And and so whatever you have, like whatever you connect to, like, like you can even say like my sacral chakra is a pleasure portal. I just like the, you know, the rhyme there happening. Yeah. But yeah, I think affirmations are really helpful and taking it slow. That's the amazing thing about self-pleasure is that it is just you. You're on your time and you can take it as slow as you want. And that's all you have to worry about. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so taking it easy and connecting to what feels good and just doing the work, doing the hard work of breaking down the fucking tabooness and the puritanical culture of the world. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, it's so deeply embedded what you said, especially about um, like, you know, like female sexuality and not being mm. encouraged to ever orgasm. I mean, just like not to get too personal, but I remember crying after my very first time as a teenager, even though it was a beautiful, magical experience that I had with my high school sweetheart, it was wonderful. Okay. But I still cried afterwards because I felt so guilty and dirty and disgusting and 
And, and he felt great. Right. He was like, right. oh, I just had yeah. my first time. This was awesome. This was great. And then for me, I felt like a piece of trash. And I, for the next mm-hmm. week, I cried pretty much every single night because I felt worthless. And it's so crazy to me how we treat, I mean, it's gotten a lot better. I will say that towards mm-hmm. women or feminine presenting individuals. And it just, Oh, it, there's so much brain brainwashing that needs to be deconstructed. And I am really frustrated that sex is still taboo. Like, I just don't understand. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. I really that it, it gets better, but for the person listening that there's probably many people that relate to that. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like you, I resonate with you. I think our society is moving in more of a sex positive direction though, which is really nice. So yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that will be the case for sure. Okay. So what are some pros and cons to working with a partner versus doing sex Mm -hmm. solo? Yeah. So, so you talking about your experience with your like longer ritual of your sex magic Mm -hmm. made me think about maybe why it is I do prefer solo work because when I am working with my partner, I think because he's not like a witch, like I kind of have to guide the situation. I'm like, we're going to meditate here. We're going to think about what we want. You know, you're facilitating it. You're being like a practitioner and a facilitator at that point. Mm -hmm. And that is a lot more. And I think that you have to take a lot more into account. So it is nice because you've got double energy. But, you know, for me, it's probably the Aries. Like, I just love to get it done. (laughs) Like, I love to do the things. I want to do yeah it doesn't need to be drawn out for me and and that's just just my personal preference so um I think one thing I love about self-pleasure is that it is completely up to you you know when you do it how you do it how long you do it you know if you need a break you know obviously if you have a partner hopefully they're like respectful of that but it's just like the pressure is off like it's just you and I think it's easier especially when you're beginning because it it might feel like a little, a little weird, maybe a little clunky at first. You're like having a good time with your partner and you're like, man, yeah, this feels good. But you're like, oh wait, I have to think about that house. (laughs) You know, (laughs) you know, that's maybe the sigil thing would be really good. Like you mentioned your sigil work, um, would be really helpful in that situation. But I just, Mm -hmm. I just know with my personal experience, um, and how I like visualize and stuff, just doing it in my self-pleasure practice is so good. And I think, um, it just the pressure is off. I think, especially if you're beginning, it's it's really a lot easier and simpler. But yeah. obviously, when you're working with a partner, like you've got that double energy. And I think it's like, it's really nice. It's bonding. Like you are creating magic together. Like, I think that is so beautiful. Even if your partner is not, you know, magical person, like they're still offering their energy. I think that's even like more beautiful. Like, that's not even like their path and they're willing to offer their energy for this thing that means a lot to you. Like that's gorgeous. I love Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think there's like pros and cons to both because working with your partner, I think it's so powerful if you can get two people's energy to work towards one goal. However, it's a lot of work. It's a whole Mm -hmm. ass ritual. You are figuring out how to even bring someone else's energy into your body so you can direct it towards your intention. If that other person is not a magical practitioner and they can't do it themselves. If you're with a fellow magical practitioner, then it's a lot easier because they can channel their own energy and that's fine. But I think it's just a lot more complicated with a partner, but I feel like the payoff may potentially be bigger if you can actually get it to work and you can sync up and push two bodies of energy out, you know? So, um, but with solo work, I totally agree with you with, um, self-pleasure I would definitely um it's definitely like a lot quicker it's not like a whole ritual I only do the big ritual when I'm with a partner but if it's just me like I'm just gonna get it done you know like that that entity that god I'm working with where I offer out my orgasms I'm not doing a whole big thing I'm like oh it's time we're gonna do it today we're gonna just get it done so yeah I agree with you I think solo is a lot easier um a lot quicker and uh but I feel like it has slightly less of a payoff only because two people can just be so freaking magical when it works. So yeah, I I hope that makes sense at least. Yeah. Um, Okay. So do you ever incorporate other energies such as astral guides during sex magic, or do you like bring in anything additional? Are you solo? Are you just working with your own energy? Yeah, I think I am mostly solo. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes I, I offer up my orgasms to Freya or my deities because like you said it's like the best offering you can give someone (laughs) like Mm -hmm. it's a great offering but I think in terms of like the energies I'm working with I am just at a place where I'm like let me just use my own you know not to say that I wouldn't I think it would be really a really interesting thing to try and to see how that goes but yeah Um, 
Yeah, I agree. Um, same here. I don't really, I don't usually bring in other astral guides, um, other than, oh my God, my dogs keep groaning in the background. I don't know if you can hear that. I can't hear it. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're literally both laying down here and they're just like oh groaning gosh. so freaking loud, like old it's men. So funny. Anyway, my cat was at my foot for a while. She's gone now, but she was down here. Oh. And every time I'd touch her with my foot, she'd make the cat activation noise. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I totally know what you're talking about. The bird yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. It's so cute. Um, okay. So what is your favorite sex magic ritual? So like, what's your go-to? What's your favorite? I think you've kind of already discussed this a little bit, but. Yeah, I, so obviously it's going to be a self-pleasure practice. I, I'm just going to be real. I love a little vibrator. I think Mm -hmm. vibrators are so fun. I think everyone should explore sex toys, Mm -hmm. especially like if you're like, you know, maybe working through that taboo-ness. It's just nice. It's just good. It makes things easier. And, um, I love like enchant. You can like enchant your sex toys, or you can just like bless them with a, with a special oil. Obviously, use it on like a okay place to use it. You know, right? Um, <laughs> you don't want to use that stuff internally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, no. I think I think right now my my personal favorite um, self pleasure practice has been stepping away from trying to manifest things and just letting myself experience pleasure and like letting myself have, like I said, like this pleasure portal where it's like, everything feels great. And like, I have the power to feel good and to make other people feel good with my sexuality. And like, I'm just like really in this divine feminine era where I'm just like, I don't want to like be exerting. Like, I'm not trying to like, you know, manifest this and this and this. I mean, obviously I, I still am, but it is just nice to experience and just to exist and to go a bit slower and to really just, you know, enjoy the feelings of life. And I think sexuality is such an amazing part. And um, so, yeah, just getting connected to my pleasure and seeing how far I can take it and just feeling good and making it a sort of devotion to my goddess and uh, letting it just be, I don't know, that's just been really powerful. Just like letting orgasms just be good and like feel yeah. good and make me feel good and empowered. Yeah. yeah, it feels healing. It feels like it's like almost like generational healing even because yeah. so many of our of the women before us like have not been able to express that. That is so yeah. true. I love that you touched on the generational trauma and, and working towards that. So yeah. um, and I don't amazing. know. This is just like a fun thing. I love watching Bailey Syrian. If you guys know her on YouTube, her dark history. She's so good. She does like dark history videos. So the mm-hmm. history of things that are maybe dark and she did the dark history of sex toys oh. and it was so fascinating to see how old dildos are we everyone everyone's been using dildos 2000 years like more than that there are dildos everywhere and like they were like like vibrators were a thing in like you know the 1950s yeah and like our grandmas were just using vibrators and like, that's fine and beautiful. And like, I don't know why we feel weird about it or why like, it feels like a new thing. Like these sex toys. It's like, we have always had dildos. Let it be known. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Or just like the sexual history of witches in general. I mean, like we were Mm -hmm. talking about in the glamour magic section or even riding the broomstick. Okay. Like there's so (laughs) much history (laughs) with witches and sex and all of that, like being, feeling empowered and all of that. So I agree. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So let's talk books. What books for sex magic would you recommend? If any? Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Sacred sex by Gabriella Hurstic is my Bible. Um, Um, it really is like the most comprehensive book that I currently have, um, on, on sex magic. It is so amazing. I also like Sex Witch by Sophie St. Thomas. Again, I talked about her earlier. She is a Scorpio. Her writing is very, like, friendly, conversational. So if you're a beginner, it is very, like, it's not scary. Like, she really brings you in. And I think she also talks a lot about sexuality, um, just separate from magic and, like, how to, like, get comfortable with it. And also like sex ed that we probably should have had in school but we didn't and so I think that's an amazing beginner book is sex witch by Sophie St. Thomas and then when you want to like really dive into the magic of it sacred sexuality by Gabriella Hurstic it's amazing I don't know if have you read it no I haven't no I need to so good about it yeah yeah it's really good 
Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for those recommendations. Yeah. And um, so that's all the questions I had for you. I did want to say that um, we are, so for anyone watching, we're doing a collaboration today where we're actually recording this video. And then right afterwards, we are recording a video on Luna's channel and we're doing like a, do you want to talk about what we're doing actually? Cause I'm like, so yeah. excited for it. <laughs> I am so excited and I want to make this like a thing. So it's going to be a virtual like girly sleepover. So it's going to be we're going to like have our face masks. We're going to be doing like our spa stuff while we talk. And we're just going to talk about the tea. I just want it to be casual. I feel like I'm a casual person. I'm not trying to be anything. I'm not. And I just want to talk about the tea of life, of being a witch, of being in the witchy community. Um, There will be some like cute and then some like controversial. And I'm so <laughs> excited because it's like what happens at a sleepover. And I feel like as adults, we don't do sleepovers enough. And I think they're sacred, honestly. And I'm just ready to, I have my little, uh, hair I'm gonna put yes. my hair back oh, this is so from exciting. witch baby so <laughs> I love it it says witch baby and I love that we're gonna do our face masks mm -hmm. and just talk and just vibe and maybe get a little a little drinky drink beforehand I yeah I'm so excited so right after we finish this I'm gonna go change into my pajamas and get my little face mask and do all the things um so for anybody interested I'll link that video down in the description box um once it's up but uh thank you so much Luna for coming on and this is such this is such a good conversation like I feel like I people so are not willing to have this conversation and I know that I you and I both will probably get some hate for some shit that we said today mm -hmm. um especially because we were very very unfiltered but I'm just so happy yeah. that you were willing to have this convo with me so thank you thank you for thank you I love it I think it's necessary I think if we want to make it less taboo we have to be conversation conversational about it yeah. like this is I think sex is as natural as eating food and we love yeah. talking about food I love food I'm a yeah. Taurus rising what can I say you know <laughs> I love it <laughs> well thank you Luna um and for everyone else thank you so much for watching this video I will have Luna's links in the description box below where you can find her all that stuff and the video collab that we are going to do in literally 15 minutes um so <laughs> thank you everyone I will see you all again soon bye